The killer clowns of the insect world, lady beetles put on a silly little facade of polka dots and vibrant hues, but some aphids have described them as an eldritch horror cursing my family for generations, or the scariest thing since pyrethroids. So what's the real story with these mottled monstrosities? And do we have anything to fear? Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we're talking about the family Cosinellidae, better known as the ladybugs, or the ladybirds, or the lady beetles. Though it is better to stick with the name lady beetles, as they're in the order Coleoptera, the beetles, not the Hemiptera, the true bugs. But the lady part of their name is a little bit more complicated. The lady in question is the Virgin Mary, and there are a couple different stories here. The first is that farmers were praying to the Virgin Mary for relief from pest insects such as aphids, and behold, swarms of these red and black beetles started sweeping the land and devouring the pests. So they became Our Lady's Birds, or Lady Birds, and eventually Lady Beetles. However, some trace it back to the fact that the Virgin Mary was often depicted wearing a bright red. And one of the more common species in Europe is the seven-spotted lady beetle, with the seven spots said to represent the seven sorrows of Mary. In etymology, not entomology, etymology, there isn't always one right answer, and both of these stories likely played a part in solidifying the common name lady beetle. Their scientific name, Cassinellidae, is a little bit more straightforward. The Latin word Cassinius means scarlet, so pretty sure you can do the math there. But not all lady beetles are the classic red and black insects you see moseying around the garden. Cassinellidae is a pretty diverse group, with over 6,000 described species and a worldwide distribution. Though a lot of them are spotted, with some variation of red, orange, yellow, or brown. The primary pigment used to create these colors are carotenoids, the same sort of thing you'd find in carrots or pumpkins. But God forbid you stumble upon a cosinellid that is lacking that tried-and-true color combo. There are a couple other traits you can use. Cosinellids are going to have a rounded, dome-shaped dorsal surface and a flattened ventral surface, some more than others. And like all beetles, their forewings are going to be modified into those hardened, shell-like elytra. That plate in front of the elytra is called the pronotum, and in the lady beetles, it stretches slightly over the head, oftentimes obscuring the head when viewed from above. They also have relatively short antennae with a little club on the end. Now, taxonomy gets complicated at the family level, and oftentimes we have to resort to things like counting tarsal segments on the feet, or looking at little details of specific sclerites, which are the plates making up the exoskeleton. So don't feel bad if you struggle to ID some of the weirder individuals. If you are interested in learning some of those more complex yet reliable ID traits, bugguide.net is a great low barrier of entry resource. And to make your life a little bit more difficult, lady beetles can also look like this. Like other beetles, lady beetles are holometabolous, meaning they have a four stage complete metamorphosis going from egg to larva to pupa, to adult. The larvae have been described as alligator-shaped, with well-developed legs, an elongate spiny body, and many of which sharing that same black and orange color combo found in the adults. As you might have guessed from their appearance, most of them are predaceous. Cosinellid larvae tend to feed on the same things as their adult counterparts, meaning most of them are predators, with a few notable exceptions feeding exclusively on plants. Three molts and many meals later, and the lady beetle larvae will molt into their pupal stage. Luckily enough for us, they often have that same black and orange color combo. The pupa will remain for around a week or two before the adult bursts forth from its shell. At last, the friendly polka-dotted garden guardians make their appearance. The adults will prowl the vegetation for tasty aphids, scales, mealybugs, and more. And all of this protein is going to come in handy for egg development and reproduction. And when the mood strikes, the female will release pheromones to attract male suitors. The pair will mate directly, 
but both parties know not to get too attached. Lady beetles are not monogamous, and both the male and female will have multiple partners to try and maximize fecundity and fitness. The female will then go about laying hundreds of brightly colored eggs, preferring to oviposit in areas with high prey abundance, setting up her future larvae for success. She'll also lay trophic eggs, unfertilized eggs that serve as yet another food source for freshly hatched larvae. Despite all of this, the larvae will still eat their siblings after hatching. In fact, cannibalism is quite common in the lady beetles, with both adults and larvae happily gobbling up their peers. In addition to dodging the attacks of their fellow beetles, Cassinellids have to worry about ants, spiders, and many more. But they are far from defenseless. Lady beetles are not very hard to see, and they're not usually trying to hide. And in nature, when something sticks out like a sore thumb, it means they've got some tricks up their sleeve. In the case of Cassinellidae, these bright colors are very intentional. Lady beetles are chock full of noxious compounds, mainly alkaloids, and the bright reds and oranges are to warn predators of their foul taste. We call this warning or aposematic coloration. But in case the colors are not enough, lady beetles are also known to reflex bleed. Reflex bleeding is where the insect exudes hemolymph, the insect equivalent of blood, as a predator deterrent. In the lady beetles, this liquid is brightly colored, foul-tasting, and leaks out of joints in the legs. This is often used as a last resort, though, as it has been shown to decrease fitness and lengthen development times. And it isn't just predators that lady beetles have to worry about. Lady beetles can live well over a year, meaning they need ways to deal with winter and other unfavorable seasons. Many coccinellids overwinter as adults hiding away in cozy crevices away from the harsh winter winds. And some species will release aggregation pheromones to group up and form hardy lady beetle masses. Convergent lady beetles are famous for this, hence the name. This strategy is not foolproof though, and many coccinellids still meet their demise during the winter, over 50% in some groups. But if they do make it through, they can enjoy the bountiful feast of insects the spring has to offer. And this is good news for our crops. Predaceous lady beetles are well known to be great crop bodyguards, feeding on aphids, scales, mealybugs, and more. Not to mention herbivorous insect eggs. Each lady beetle will eat hundreds of insects over the course of its life, and they are viewed so highly that the USDA has introduced multiple non-native species for pest control purposes. Some of those went better than others. In the case of, say, the Vidalia beetle, it was a massive success. Cottony cushion scale made its way to California back in the 1800s and was obliterating the citrus industry. USDA brought over its natural predator, the Vidalia beetle, and it immediately got to work knocking down the populations of this prolific pest. One of the greatest success stories for biocontrol. The Asian multicolored lady beetle is a bit less cut and dry of a story. We actually tried to introduce it back in 1916 for aphid control, but like many species, we just couldn't get it to establish a stable population. However, in the 1980s, we ended up finding it in Louisiana, having seemingly established a population on its own. And while it does feed on pest species, it's a pretty big generalist. So it's not just feeding on the pests, it's feeding on the predators too, including our other lady beetles. Because of this, it can be hard to quantify the real impact of Harmonia axiridis on pest control. And from an ecologic perspective, it also outcompetes our native lady beetles. And worst of all, the accidental crushing of this species during grape processing for wine can cause ladybug taint, as the defensive compounds of H. axiridis can create an off-putting taste. But anyway, not all lady beetles are predaceous either and the herbivorous ones come with their own suites of problems. For example, the Mexican bean beetle can be a pest of various legumes across farms and gardens. But overall, having lady beetles on your property is a good thing, especially if you're trying to grow some veggies. Now you can buy packs of lady beetles online to release into your garden, and yes, these augmentative releases have shown some aphid reduction. However, these beetles disperse in a matter of days, so unless you're consistently releasing coccinellids, this is a short-term band-aid solution. Additionally, this can mess up the genetics of your local population, 
introduce nasty pathogens, and harm the original populations in which these beetles were harvested. You see, most of the cassinellids available for purchase are convergent lady beetles, Hippodamia convergence. These guys aggregate in mass during the winters, and millions are believed to be harvested each year to support the commercial lady beetle trade. A more long-term solution is to provide ample habitat for your local lady beetles to thrive, providing consistent protection for your crops. This can be done by planting native flora adjacent to or even within your growing spaces, ensuring that local lady beetles still have hunting grounds to prowl even during the off-season or times of low pest prevalence. Additionally, leaf litter and some woody debris can provide overwintering habitat for these lady beetles, covering their full life cycle and hopefully ensuring a robust population of cassinellids for your crops. Anyways, thank you all for listening. And if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. Also, if I missed any fun facts, or if you have any favorite lady beetle species, let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing about them. Peace, y'all.